say uh you know a lot of female artists are taking that kind of thought route <laughs> where it's like yeah. city girl hot girl some all this shit what what is why are you saying i would rather make it for these type of women or people that go through that shit? well yeah those type of women too because not every woman like you know me personally i you know no and i'm not knocking strippers at all like I'm not knocking strippers See, me, off because I, I know strippers. I'm friends with strippers, you know? Okay. I'm all not right. knocking them. But at the same time, <laughs> damn, round one. <laughs> but at the same time, it's just some people had to take a different route and their struggle was different. You know, like me, I didn't been homeless and slept in cars with my kids and I didn't, you know, work low end jobs. I didn't got paid three dollars an hour. I didn't went and cleaned up houses and cleaned toilets and I didn't did all that. You know, I didn't had to go through a week without eating or you know days without showering like really trying to figure it out like really just in the world and not choosing certain routes because i had kids or because my morals was on a different i was just somewhere else in life mm -hmm. like i didn't really been by myself and like isolated to the point where i had nobody to call on or talk to but god mm -hmm. so and this is my first project i'm ever able to put out i've been doing music since i was a child but i never had time to focus on music just like you know, Cardi B, Cash Doll. Cash Doll, she made, I want to say, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but she made like a couple hundred thousand one night and quit stripping and put it all into the studio. Mm. You know, her motivation, I don't know what her motivation was, what she went through, but I know she went through something. Yeah. Because she, she's not doing that no more. You know, but with me, it's like, okay, I done went through all this stuff. Like, I done been hit by a car. Damn. I was pronounced dead. Like all right. th that happened back in 2013 here, here we go. in Wichita. We gotta talk about that. Okay. Well, all right. So run it. Like <laughs> Okay, so um Pronounced dead ain't nothing everybody gonna come on here and say. Yeah. <laughs> so you got hit by a car. What what led to that? What what was the situation? I don't know if you heard about it. It was back in 2013, it happened July 5th, 2013. Um, I was actually walking from my grandmother's house. She stays on 22nd in Minnesota. I was crossing 21st Street right in front of that dollar store. Mm -hmm. And as I was crossing, there was a horse and a man and a little boy. His name was Eddie. Have you heard about it? I'm just tripping over the horse, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> the little boy was riding a horse. The man was walking the horse. Um, you know, I said hello to him. They they were crossing the street, but I had already crossed the street all the way because I was speaking to them before I had continued walking because I was walking down 21st Street to go to Grove. I was meeting a cousin, keep meeting a few family members. We were supposed to be just hanging out. Um, a car came off the highway, was speeding. I was walking on my phone, you know, mm. and I just heard the doom. It had hit the um hit the horse. The horse fell on top of the man. The little boy fell off the top of the horse, <coughs> and so of course me, you know, I run to the street. The car took off. Car took off. All right. Um. So the man is laying in the street. Um. You know, he's bleeding. His stomach. You know, it's kind of. It wasn't just cut open, but you know, it was bleeding from his stomach. The little boy was, you know laying there crying, screaming, crying, but he couldn't move because he just fell off the top of a horse by a car. And I called the police. The police station is literally five minutes down the street. I'm telling them where I'm at, what happened. And another car came and hit me and I'm bending over their bodies. So another car came and hit me. Just some random car? <laughs> All right. I actually know the person in the second car. I, I'm going to get there. Right. <laughs> but um, so the second car came and hit me. Um, like I said, I was standing over their body. So the car that hit me, I flew 20 feet from the scene. But that man that was laying there, he instantly died because he was already hurt. So the second car killed him. Um, the little boy, <clears throat> he um, his name is Little Eddie. I actually knew him, like kind of grew up around him. But he's now uh, mentally unstable now. Bang. That happened when he was five years old. So he's like 11 now, I want to say. But um yeah, he had to have surgery. He had a really bad, like a really bad experience, but I was pronounced dead at the scene. Um, there was another man that got hit too that came and helped me. It's crazy. I know. There was another man <laughs> oh, that God. came and helped me, but once I went to the hospital, what's crazy is I had three full ride track scholarships. I was a junior in high school, um, about to go into my senior year. Lost all those scholarships. It broke my leg. Um, this whole side of my face was gone like you know from the pavement like my body being yeah. scraped across the pavement so scars was everywhere like abrasions um they told me i would never walk again 
I had to learn to rewalk. They let me out of the hospital in two days. I was at Wesley. They didn't give me a walker, crutches. Like, I had to get everything myself. I had no physical therapy. I was just, you know, 17, dropped out of school before my, um, before I went to the second semester of senior year. It was just really, really tough. And, like, it was a full 360 shift with my life because I was getting, I was enrolled in the military. I had three full ride scholarships to OU, UNT. Um, a college in California because I was running track yeah. and I was one of the fastest in the city and state. Uh Oh, so that, that was very, um, that was very life changing for me. Very, very life changing for me for the better or worse. I don't want to say worse because everything happens for a reason, you know, and I see the reason behind it. Now I still deal with a lot of issues. Like as far as like with my head and stuff, like I have memory issues a little bit. But I can always recite my raps and my mm. poetry and stuff, you know. But, <clears throat> like, I got dents in my head. You know, it, was, it was a lot of trauma that I had to go through, with, like, even with that. But not know? on the edges, though. The edges stay like... <laughs> the edges was gone. <laughs> <laughs> the edges was gone. Face was gone, too. But God is good. But at the time, I mean, some people... You said... It, like now you see every, everything happen for a reason but you said life changing uh at that moment would you say it was for the worse at the, i mean in terms of the, per, the the perception you or the pers perspective others would have had of you at that time it was like oh shit she fucking up and see because i thought the only dream i really had because since i was a kid i'm like i want to be a rapper you know like i want to be on tv i'm gonna be performing i'm gonna be doing this but I got so into sports because that's all my mom kept me in because, you know, I come from the struggle. So mm -hmm. I had I played sports, you know, every team that I was on. I, my mom never had to pay for nothing. They made sure I was taken care of because I was good at it. You know, with the track. Yeah. I trained every summer. I went out of town. I didn't have to ever pay for anything. I was taken care of, you know. But <clears throat> after that happened, I really thought it was just over. Like, what is life now? You know, because I really, really, like, I was running in a junior Olympics, like, since the eighth grade. Yeah. So, that was what I planned to do in my life. I wasn't thinking about music, nothing. I didn't have the time to. I was always writing. Like, always. I got notebooks, stacks, but track was what I wanted to do. So, when that got taken away, I had to just kind of figure some stuff out. <laughs> What'd you figure out? I got a gift. I got plenty of gifts. I can utilize all of them if I want to. You know what I mean? Like my mom, she played basketball herself back in college. So, you know, she didn't accomplish that goal. But, you know, I got a goal I can do myself too. take care of her. Mm. Yeah. What? Um, she got pregnant with me. <laughs> that messed her up. I mean, hey, <laughs> hey, we be killing a whole lot of dreams. Kids will do that. <laughs> but damn. Man. But you got, you got, you said you have a couple of kids, right? Yes. Now, um. You know, did for you, did you find, I mean, did that change your life at all? Or or uh, at what point did you decide, like, I got to go do this shit? I actually thought I was a failure after that car accident because I got pregnant at 18. That happened mm. when I was 17, you know, had my son at 19. It was hard. I was trying to figure everything out on my own. But I've always wrote like that's all I've ever did. Like the whole time I lived in Texas, I was writing the whole time. I recorded a couple songs out there. And I was like, man, if I move back to Wichita, I'm a rapper. Mm. Like, I don't like I don't have a plan B. Like, yeah. this is what I want to do. And this is what I'm going to do. And nobody's about to stop me. Nobody and nothing is going to stop me. And that's just what I've been going at every single day.